I hate this. This is not what I want to be doing. I want to address the myth of a dream job. No one ever told me this, and I feel like it was kind of a rude awakening. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Cindy Goodman, and today we are going to be doing something that my sign isn't on. So what we are doing today is I will be talking about, you know, my experience of getting a job at IGN, but I really wanted to go over some questions that I got from people that are kind of like the FAQ, like how do you get your dream job? And like, how do you get your foot in the door? And like, what's the deal? Before we jump into everything, I am gonna caveat this with obviously like, I'm relatively young and I am by no means claiming to be an expert and I'm sure that there are like multiple, multiple ways to get to one point, but this has just been what I've learned through my experience and I thought why not share it with everybody. So the first question that I probably got the most was what did you major in and what were your notable experiences on your resume? I'm not gonna go super, super, super in depth because again, I have another video where I like in depth talk about my experience, um, but in school, I did major in human biology. You'll notice it has nothing to do with what I'm doing now, um, but I'm really thankful that for that experience because, you know, while I think it would have been extremely helpful to have taken some journalism classes, yes. Um, I mean, I did take some media studies classes and I did take some like games classes. USC has a great games program. Um, and so I did take some of those classes once I figured out that like that might be the route that I wanted to go into. Ultimately, what I, I take from my biology experience is it really taught me how to think in a different way. Notable experiences on my resume prior to working at IGN. I consulted for Red Bull on their partnership with Activision for Destiny when Destiny was owned by Activision. I worked for Red Bull as a, I don't remember what my title was, like video coordinator or something um, where I did video strategy for their esports on YouTube and I did action sports strategy stuff and like, you know, pending end cards, kind of the bitch work, if you will. I was a PA slash PR intern situation for GameStop, GameSpot, GameStop, for games bought for GameSpot, where I helped out with their E3 booth. And then from Red Bull, I went to BuzzFeed, where I led video strategy on YouTube for BuzzFeed Blue, which is now called BuzzFeed Multiplayer, in addition to running their Insta one of their Instagram accounts and helping out with BuzzFeed Video. I was also a producer. I would produce videos there, so I would set the strategy, um, looking at like audience development and all that and insights and understanding the back end of of YouTube and videos and what makes it successful and like how do we work with the algorithm, etc. And then was in videos and did those videos. I was streaming the whole time as well, um, making my own content. I ended up hosting the backstage of the Game Awards in 2017, I think. And then I applied to IGN and I did some freelance for IGN during the application process and then I got the job. How long did you know you wanted to work in games before actually getting a job in it? How did you have the confidence and put together a portfolio, take the risk. Uh, so I'm actually gonna answer that last question, that last one first, which is how did you have the confidence put together a portfolio, take the risk? I think as soon as you learn, and I talked about this in another video, um, my like 2020 year in review video, as soon as you realize that like you are the only person standing in the way of yourself, like life will get so much easier. <laughs> Obviously that's a little bit different if you're still living at home and like you have to respect your parents or you have like, you know, guardians that you need to respect. But I was the only person that was standing in the way of me achieving being a host in video games it made me realize that's like, oh, I can just do this. And so finding small steps to work towards your goal adds up to big steps and then you get to your role, which is great. I hope that doesn't make it sound like I never had moments of doubt because I 100% did. And even when I was still in school, I remember one of my, um, my uncle, he works in like video production and stuff. He was like, oh, like I can help you film a reel and da 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 Like we'll put you in front, of, like I'll help you do X, Y, Z. And I remember being so embarrassed. I was like, yeah, totally. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna do that. That sounds so scary and embarrassing. Uh, but you need a reel. You need a reel to apply to most hosting jobs. I'd say 99% of hosting jobs ask for a reel or some sort of sample work. So a reel is just like, it's a highlight reel. Think of it like that. Reel, short for highlight reel, at least I think. But for example, like I have my reel on my YouTube channel and then I have like a comedy reel, which is kind of more of like the sketch based stuff that I've done. And it's just like chopping up of kind of 
all the sketches that I've done and my hosting reel, the chopping up of stuff I've hosted that I think is cool and relevant. Um, as far as like knowing that I wanted to be doing this and just going with it, I think it's a combination of both. Um, I think as I was open to just doing a bunch of things work-wise, seeing what stuck and what I found interesting and what did I find really energizing, um, that's something that I'm learning right now is like, for example, I find it really energizing and I get like a lot of like, oh yeah, like I'm digging this when I am working with brand partnerships separately on my like Instagram, for example, that gives me a lot of energy. And so I kind of take note of that and it's like, okay, I like that. And then you kind of think about like, what's other ways that I can do that? Like, how can I do that more? Um, what is it that I like about it? And just kind of analyze and think about what you like and think about why you like that and how can you incorporate it with a job? Um, but I think that I'm smiling because like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, I do know what I'm talking about, but I only know what's worked for me. And I don't think my career would be the same if I kept a very rigid, just like eye on the prize, like, this is what I need to be doing. Because I think so much of my career has been being open to things and be like, oh, this sounds interesting. I'll learn that. I'll jump on this other project just to like learn and see if I like it. And then if I do like it, I'll do more of that and kind of letting that snowball into what has become my career. And I think just realizing that it's like, there's really no destination in life. Like it's just so much of just exploration and being open to experiences. And I personally find that being way more enriching. And I say that as somebody who grew up extremely rigid where I was just like, this is my goal. This is the only thing that I will do. And that served me. And I think there is a place for that. Um, and I think goals are fantastic, but I also think that sometimes goals can be so blinding when it's like, oh, this is the only thing, this is what I'm meant to do and I'm not gonna do anything else. And you might miss out on some really cool opportunities. What I do in college, what was your path after college to your current job? In college, like I said, I was human biology, but I streamed and I streamed a lot. I streamed like five or six days a week for a minimum for three or four hours. That was my minimum. Um, I would sometimes try to do six. So it was like, it was a lot of work, but it was just something that I really liked doing. And um, as soon as I realized that I didn't want to work in medicine and I wanted to do something in games, I reached out to anyone that I knew that touched video games, anyone. So the way that I met Alex is we met at a Call of Duty tournament. Uh, we met at COD Champs 2015. That happened because I really like COD Esports. At, the, at that point, it wasn't CDL. I love COD Esports and I had gone to a few Esports events and uh, COD Champs was being held at LA Live, which is really close to USC. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get tickets and I wanna go. And I just talked to anybody that I could possibly talk to. Prior to that, I had already been talking to Red Bull. And so Red Bull, Esports, I was trying to intern with them. Ultimately, the internship didn't work out. I was crushed, I cried a lot and was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm never gonna get a job in video games because I didn't get this internship. Like how things turned out. But anyways, um, Red Bull Esports, I was going to be their intern and they had brought me in and I met the team and Alex was somebody who was on the team but working remote and he was coming down for, uh, for COD Champs. And so we met up and then I just said yes. And we, he kind of like introed me to other people who were there, people from Activision, other gaming journalists, um, people from MLG, players. I just talked to anybody that I possibly could. And I say that a lot, um, but I also, not so, brag or anything. I have a pretty high social IQ. I do though. My biggest piece of advice to people who want to work in games specifically or whatever industry you want to be in is go to events, like immerse yourself, go experience things, even if you're not being paid to be there because that's where you meet people. And how would anybody know that you want to work in video games if you're just sitting on your couch talking about how much you wanna work in video games. You need to go to conventions and talk about how much you wanna work in video games. You need to go meet people and talk to people whose careers you find interesting. I know that that's difficult now, but like there's plenty of online panels that happen. Go sign up for them, go watch it, reach out to panelists that you find interesting to learn more about what they do. Like people wanna help other people. So if you go in with like a heart that actually cares about people and not being selfish and just being like, I'm just gonna use everybody to get to the top or to get my foot in the door, people can sn sniff that, so don't do that. Were you involved at all with USC games? Did your USC experience help with your career? I would absolutely say my USC experience helped with my career. So ultimately, I talked about how I was gonna be Red Bull Esports intern. The way that I got that 
foot in the door was because USC Esports Club, I think is what it's called. I wasn't super involved with that. This was really the only thing that I did with them because they were mostly League of Legends at the time and I didn't play League yet, so I didn't do anything with them. But saw a flyer on the ground for a Destiny Time Strikes tournament, which is basically like a time trial for a Destiny level. And I was like, oh shit, I wanna do this. This seems fun, like right up my alley and Red Bull was putting it on. So I went and while I was there, I made it known. It was like, hey, this is cool. Like, you know, because there was somebody from Red Bull there. I was like, you know, I would love to work with Red Bull for these reasons, which is very genuine. I have a lot of respect for Red Bull and like the environment that they've cultivated and just their mindset with things. And then we actually ended up winning that tournament. And so we went to Red Bull HQ for the finals. And while I was there, I just talked to a bunch of people. I literally talked to anybody and was like, yeah, like it's so cool what you guys are doing. Like, I would love to be a part of it. Like, this is so cool that we're at this tournament. Like, let me know if I could ever be of help or, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying that that can't happen if you're not at USC, but I think the biggest thing at college, in college is that you can get so distracted. And it's amazing because you live with all, like your friends are all within reach and you have all this extra like free time and just there's so much going on, but I think it can be really easy to overlook like the school spirit aspect of it and like what's going on on campus. Go take advantage of that stuff because if I hadn't, I would not have gotten all those Red Bull opportunities, which ultimately got me my BuzzFeed opportunity, which ultimately got me my Game Awards opportunity, which ultimately got me my IGN opportunity. So it all snowballs. And then as far as involved with USC games, I'm probably, I'm definitely more involved now that I've left. Gordon Bellamy is amazing. And he let me sit in on some of his classes and was just very nurturing once I realized that like I wanted to work in games and I wasn't really sure what to do. This is another piece of advice, which is like not every path is going to come to fruition. And a great example, is that Alex actually knew one of the counselors at USC. So Alex made the intro and I talked to the guy and was like, hey, I wanna work in games. I like don't really even know what I wanna do in games. I don't think I said that yet. I had no idea I wanted to be a host until I had already worked at Red Bull for a few years. I, I told Rob that, I was like, I don't really know what I wanna do. I just know that I wanna work in games. Like, can you help me? Like, what advice would you give? And his advice was just like to start writing because a lot of people who work in video games, they started as jur games journalists or they started in the writing path. It could be seen as one of the easier ways to like get your foot in the door because it's like you're writing, you're on Twitter, da 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 da. Sorry, I'm not gonna get into that because I didn't do that. But that was his advice. And I remember being extremely discouraged because I was like, I don't want to be a writer. I don't want to do this, like, ugh. And then I didn't do it. And I felt really bummed because I was like hoping he'd have like some magical answer and he didn't. And that's not his job too. Anyways, Gordon Bellamy was super awesome and let me like sit in on some of his classes. And I think that just being part of that conversation, I don't know that, you know, it's not like I was sitting in on his classes and then was like, oh, aha moment, now I have a job but just getting a general idea of like how the games industry works and all that jazz is really helpful. And then the Career Center did some panels with people who work in video games. I got to go ins to Insomniac and I asked for like an informational interview with one of the guys and he gave me a tour, which was great and told me about what it's like writing in games. For a while, I thought I wanted to be a creative director on the game dev side, um, which is so interesting. So again, just like being open to exploring what's interesting to you and not just like fixating on, like if I was so obsessed with becoming a game director, then like I could have completely missed the fact that I love producing videos and being on camera and like that side of creativity. Okay, so last question. I'm guessing rejections happened a lot. What drove you to keep on going and in general, how many places did you apply for one stuck? If I'm not invited to host, then how can I apply to host? That's another thing that I don't think I've explicitly said yet, but maybe it's a little obvious now, but like, if you enjoy something, don't wait until it's like official to do it. Like I streamed on Twitch because I thought it was cool and fun and I liked being in front of the camera. I liked making videos. Like I liked playing video games. It's all of those together um, and Nobody was paying me to do it. Like I didn't get partnered until like, I had already been streaming for maybe like four or five years by the time I was partnered. And at that point there were no affiliates. So I was literally making no money off of Twitch. I was streaming to maybe anywhere between eventually like 50 to 75 people. And then I took a break and I was streaming to 30 people and I was still streaming like three to five times a week. And it's just, it's just one of those things where if you like making videos, dude, make videos. It doesn't matter if anybody's watching it because ultimately if you have a job opportunity come up 
and you say, look at these videos I made, that is gonna go so much further than somebody who's like, oh yeah, like I'm really good at making videos, but I just like haven't yet. But like, trust me, I'm really good. And maybe that person is super good, but if you don't have something concrete to show, like, you know, jobs aren't like trying to do you any favors necessarily. Like they're just looking for the best candidate for their role. As far as rejection goes, yeah, rejection can be really difficult, whether it's rejection from an audition, whether it's rejection from a job that you really, really thought you wanted um, and didn't get. And I think that I am not immune to that. It freaking sucks. And sometimes it feels like you're just in this like spiraling vortex of suck because you didn't get this thing that you felt really called to. You thought it was perfect for you. It was amazing. Um, and actually I have this quote for you, for anybody who's feeling this way. I'm trying to see things in perspective. My dog wants a bite of my peanut butter chocolate chip bagel. I know she cannot have this because chocolate makes dogs very sick. My dog does not understand this. She pouts and wraps herself around my leg like a scarf and purrs and tries to convince me to give her just a tiny bit. When I do not give in, she eventually gives up and lays in the corner under the piano, drooping and sad. I hope the universe has my best interest in mind like I have my dogs. When I want something with my whole being and the universe withholds it from me, I hope the universe thinks to herself, silly girl, she thinks this is what she wants, but she does not understand how it will hurt. And I think ultimately that is what I find comforting with um, rejection. Maybe it'll take me a couple weeks to get there, um, but just realizing that it's like, maybe I really wanted this, but ultimately that isn't what was best for me. Having that perspective in mind is good. And again, just remembering it's a journey, I think to use Alex as an example, he originally applied to work at YouTube and didn't get the job. And as, rejection hurts for, I'd say most people, that rejection stung, he wasn't stoked about it. Um, and then the job reopened and he reapplied and he ended up getting it a couple years later. And I think that a few things to remember is one, if a door is closed right now, it doesn't mean forever. Everything is temporary, even rejection. And if you're feeling stuck, it's just like, for now. It's a no for now, but who knows? Maybe in a few years when that door opens again, you're gonna realize that it's not what you actually want or it's not what's best for you or you're not really interested as much anymore. So yeah, rejection's difficult. I would say I couldn't even tell you the number of jobs that I applied to out of college, probably 20. And then the perfect job for me, which was Red Bull, popped up and that was it. And you would think maybe that was like my first job that I applied to because I had already been working with Red Bull for a while, um, but it wasn't. I applied to a bunch of different games industry jobs, most of them on the developer side uh, rather than on the media side. And look at what happened and it worked out because now I work in media and I love it. I want to address the myth of a dream job because no one ever told me this and I feel like it was kind of a rude awakening when I got my job at IGN. So my goal was, I was like, I want to work at IGN, like that would be a dream job. I also don't think that necessarily dream jobs exist um, or that there's like one job out there for you and like you gotta find it. I think it's a lot of like life, you know, in general is what you make it. But while you might still super love and feel incredibly blessed and you worked so hard to get to this job that you wanted, you reached your goal, it's still a job, which means that you probably will have days that you don't want to do it or you'll have times when you're like, oh, I hate this, this is not what I wanna be doing. And just like frustration, because I think that that is natural with like your relationship with work, because it is work, it's not play, it's work. Um, so there will naturally be times when work feels like work. However, you know, you hope that it's tons of fun and enriching and fulfilling and you're learning a ton of things, it's amazing. And I'm sure that it will be for you. I know it is for me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's perfect just because it's your dream job or like you hit your goal or whatever it is. So that is that. Um, I hope that this was helpful. And you know, for those of you who are maybe about to graduate college or you are looking at a career change or any of that, that this can just like be helpful for you. Wishing you all the best. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget new videos every Thursday and I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.